Hello everyone, I'm Nadim and welcome to the updated version of moving in, moving an object randomly in Unity. Um, so I've seen that in the previous video you guys had a lot of problems. So I decided that uh, I should make a new one. Um, and also because Unity has changed a few simple things about the Navmesh agent uh, system. Okay, so... Um, First thing we want to do is create our ground, and I'll also I'll try to cover every um, problem or bug that you guys faced in the previous tutorial. So just call it ground um, like that. Uh, make it uh, 20 by 20, and also we have to make sure that it's reset. Um, you can just click here and press reset. So again, 20 by 20, and um, so this is our ground. Now we have to create our uh, player. So do the same 0, 0, 0, and then name this uh, name this player. Um, you can give it a different color just to differentiate. So and put it above the ground slightly. Um, okay, I think we're ready now. Um, create a new script called move randomly. I already have that um, because of the previous tutorial. Now open it. Um, so in previous versions of Unity, um, you didn't have to uh, type this line using Unity Engine that AI. So it's a it's a new new thing you have to do. That's why a lot of uh, a lot of you with newer versions uh, complain that uh, it says uh, something missing or or whatever. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, of course, the first thing you need is a reference to the navmesh agent. So call it navmesh agent, and go ahead and add one to the player uh, um, object. Okay. So just go first add component and navmesh agent type navmesh agent. Okay, great. Now um, just one second. I have to save this. Okay, great. Now um, since I just compiled that and you've seen the variable, um, we need a public float time for new path. This is the time that the um, code has to wait until it uh, finds an, a new destination. Okay, so at the beginning, oh, oops, at the beginning of the code, we need to assign the navmesh agent. So that's simple. Just get component navmesh agent, and that will get this component right here and assign it in this variable. Okay, great. Now um, we need a method that finds the new uh, random position or destination that we want to go to. So we'll make it return a vector three, and we'll call it um, new or get new random uh, position. Um, we will have to make float. We will have to um, give it two coordinates, random coordinates in x and z, and the y should be zero because we don't want it uh, to fly. So we can just give it uh, two random values. Let's say minus twenty to twenty, and same with the z. Just change that to z, and we can create a vector three. Pause. Um, new vector 3 and we'll give it x 0 for the y and z and simply return that uh, pause that we just created okay so now we have a method that creates the random position next thing we want to do is create the coroutine that will uh, manage this whole thing um, i enumerator and then say um, whatever you want to call it, 
um, or just call it core routine or you know just do something about whatever uh, um, at the beginning what we want to do is um, wait wait let's say uh, wait a couple of seconds before we find the new path so we will pass right Tell the turn new, wait for seconds, and then we will pass the time that we set in this uh, time. Okay, so this R should not be here. Time for value for new path. Okay, so this is the delay time between each path or each destination that we want to go to. So after we've uh, after the player has waited or the NPC. Um, what you will need is a method that will get the new path and sets it uh, I'll just get new path and sets it to the uh, map mesh agent as a destination so I'll go ahead and create a new method get new path and this will um, do nav mesh agent dot set destination and then simply um, get the new render position that is right here. So we calculate a random position, then assign it uh, to the nav mesh agent as a destination. Okay, so now we have that working. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Now another thing that we will need is a bool to determine whether the coroutine is working or not. And that's because if you want to call it in the update function, we don't want it. Uh, we don't want to call it every frame. So we will just call it each time it's not working. So simply in core routine, um, in default it's false. Um, create the void update method, which is called every frame, and say if it's if it's not in in core routine then start the coroutine and that is do something and here um, type in coroutine equals true at the beginning because it's working here and at the end of course it will be false so um, so it starts again um, okay great um, so the problems that you guys faced this was the first one. Um, now we'll go ahead to the second one. Um, some of you did not have the navigation tab over here. So simply you just go to the top, click on window, go down to navigation. And here it is. So, and also if you get an error that says, um, I'll just show it to you. This error set destination can only be called on an active agent that has been placed on an average so why does this happen? it happens because you have not baked uh, your scene so to do that just simply hit on your click on your ground object go to the, to the navigation tab click on navigation static and then choose the walkable if it's walkable of course if it's, if it's an obstacle we will go ahead and um, take the not walkable so select on ground, go to navigation, select, uh, take this and then hit bake. You can see the pre, the pre, uh, the pre area. This is where um, um, your, your uh, player can move. So after you do that, I mean, let's just set the delay. For example, let's say um, one second, each one second the player has to find a new path. We will uh, watch it from the scene. Okay, now there might be a problem where uh, a lot of you guys faced and when it reaches the edge, it will no longer find a path outside of the uh, area or whether it's uh, the new random position was an obstacle or something. Now I'll show you how to fix that real quick. So in order to do that, we will need to create a we will need to store the new destination in a variable called target so um, vector3 target 
and we will also need um, okay let's just set this and then we'll continue so just simply right here just say target equals the this new random position and target here so so we can uh, access this variable outside of the method okay now another thing that we will need is a nav mesh agent path nav mesh path and call it path now why do we need this it's because for example if if the destination is in uh, an unwalkable area the path um it, it, it won't find the path and you will get no errors and the the cube will just stay there without moving so we will need a way to detect if the path is valid or not and if it's not we will just keep looping and find another path so how can you how can you do that so it's uh, it's very simple at the beginning I will show you how to detect if it's uh, if it's if the path is is not valid so to do that um, there is a function method in the nav mesh agent called calculate path. Now what this does is um, you give it the target position and the path you want to store the uh, info in, and it will return a boolean. So if it if it did calculate a valid path, it will return true. If not, it will return false. So I'll say if it did not get a valid path. Then what we want to do is debug and say um, uh, found an invalid invalid path. Um, so let's let's uh, let's try this out. something is wrong yeah um, we did not assign this path uh, variable so in the start just say path equals uh, new average path that's it now let's go ahead and test this uh, okay so at some point it found an invalid path and it says that Because the delay is um, very low, it finds another one instantly. But if you had like five seconds delay, um, it might stop for a little bit before it moves, which might be a problem for you. So, in order to solve that, we can uh, um, down here just say while. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we need to uh, create another another variable to store the the true or false value of this uh, event. So we'll just call it um, bool valid path and assign it right here equals to this. So we don't have to calculate the path twice. Change this to that path, and same thing here. So, if it did not find a valid path, it will keep looping and looking for a new path. Now, also, you'd have to do this again because if you do not do this line over here, it will keep looping forever. This value will never change. You have to do this. Also, we might as well add a slight, a small delay. Build, uh, return new, wait for seconds, maybe mm, 0 0.01 seconds, just to uh, prevent any crash from happening, um, I think we can remove that if nothing happens right now, okay, so, um, at first we check if the path is valid, if it's not, we debug and say that's not valid, and we'll continue looping to find a new path. Um, I will show you how um, where is that helpful too in uh, in a second. Um, okay, so it works. The player keeps navigating, and it will tell you when there was a an invalid path. 
Um, okay, great. Um, let's say we have a lot of obstacles and uh, we'll see how this uh, player behaves. So to add an obstacle in this system, you would have to, um, let's say we, ha we add the cylinder and we start obstacle. Add a nav mesh obstacle to that. Move it up slightly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna surround a player with a whole bunch of those. So we'll see how we can avoid them. So in, o in order to make this object an obstacle, um, click on it in the hierarchy and then take this uh, navigation static and hit unwalkable, not walkable, and then hit break. So as you can see, the player cannot cannot uh, enter this white area. So just go ahead and duplicate a bunch of those like this. Oh. Um, select all of them and hit bake now you can see that we do not have a um we have a lot more obstacles and we should get a lot more invalid path uh debug results here so let's see what happens let's increase the delay time to like three seconds and see what what the player does now clear this um, you can see that works you can maybe set it to like five seconds You can always mess with the variables and if you understand the code, you can always just tweak things and change stuff. But you get the point and hopefully everything will work for you. Um, uh, so this is it. I guess everything works now. Uh, I think I've covered the, um, the most of the problems that, ha that uh, was in the previous video. Um, I hope this was. I hope this uh, video was helpful to you. Um, I will post this code in the description. And um, peace. Goodbye.